Hey guys, it's the Ultimate Filmer here, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new version of PowerDirector, PowerDirector 19. As soon as we jump into the software, we're going to take a look at some of the new features that it brings. Alright, so if you're opening PowerDirector 19 for the first time, uh, this is what you're going to find, minus this clip here. This is my own. But look at all these new clips and uh, pictures that it comes with. And you get access to all of the Shutterstock media. So you can just download anything you want from here. All right, so the first new feature I'm gonna check out here is the Mask Designer. So it's not actually the Mask Designer, obviously, but we're gonna take a look at what's new. All right, so if I open it up here, go to Mask Properties. So in the Mask Properties, we have two new masks here, these linear ones here. So you can just drag these bars just like that. Now here's what I really like and I'm excited for in the mask designer and that is right here that's the create a custom selection mask. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on it and if I scrub to a part where this is in focus, now I can show you how this works. So you can just click to create a point, click to create another point and I can just go around objects like this creating all these points in order to create a mask. I'm just going to grab this single leaf here and I just click on the beginning one to connect the whole thing. And now I have my selection of this this leaf here. So I can change the feather radius and you can create more than one mask of course. And so once the selection is made I'm just going to zoom in here so that you can see better. Uh, the dots you can go ahead and click between them or click on them to edit them. Say I want a curve. So here's one dot and uh, so between this dot, its previous dot, and the dot that comes after it, I can make it curve by dragging these. If you've ever used any other editing software, you probably know how this works. And it's great that they've added it to PowerDirector because it can be really useful as well. And I want to get rid of this, I'm just going to right click and click remove point. I can also drag around the mask by going to the red dot for this mask. So you can literally mask people's movements now inside a power director uh, with the curves and the dots and everything. And you can keyframe them as well. So anything that I'm doing here with these uh, th these dots on the mask, you can keyframe as well. So very flexible indeed. This is exactly what you want in a mask designer if you're going to use it for more things. Now I can show you what's next and it's kind of a new redesign of the interface here. Everything's pretty much, like you'll be able to understand it, it's very similar in a way. It's just little things like uh, right here, you can click on the details view or the icon view for all your media and stuff. So there you go. If I remember correctly, I think this is a new icon, but that's not important really. And now you have everything sorted into tabs. So you have your media content, your color boards, background music, and your sound clips. Let's say I'm on sound clips. Now everything is sorted by content. So you have your downloaded, people, miscellaneous, transportation, work, home, daily life, animals, sports, weapons, instruments, environment. Same thing if I go to background music, it's all organized. And if you wanted to create tags for your media content, you can just click here, add a new tag. So I've created a nature tag. I'm just going to click uh, here and just drag them. Or I can right click on them and click add to and then nature. Now when I go to click on nature, I have them uh, sorted here. So if you're very organized and you want it to be like this, this is perfect. Anyway, I'm going to delete that tag. Same goes for anything in your effects tab, the PIP objects room, particle room, the title room, transition room, and you get the idea. Now if I go to the effects room, you can see that they have more of a drop down style here. So if I go to style effect, I can click on that, and then there's also a drop down. And you can see there's stuff like style, and it's all just sorted. Now, if you go ahead, click on your clip, and click Fix Enhance, you're probably going to be wondering where your LUTs are. So, they are no longer here in Fix Enhance. You can just close it. And in the Effects tab here, we're going to close that drop down. And as you can see, I don't know if you noticed earlier, but the color LUTs are here. You can see all the ones I've imported. All you have to do is just take them, drag them onto a clip, and you have your LUT applied. 
Now if I take this other one and I put it on, it's just going to replace the one from before because if you go into effect, you can see that it's here and you can just remove it like that. Of course, if you want to sort your LUTs, you can add more tags and put them underneath the color LUT section here. Okay, so now we're going to check out the uh, upgraded motion graphics. So I, if I go ahead to the uh, title designer here, and we go to motion graphics, and you can see here, you have tons of motion graphics, and I'm just going to take this one. So if I play it, it currently looks like that. So let's go ahead and edit it. So this is going to be a different sort of uh, title designer you have here. You can go to the title and we can change the text. So you have two different title tracks for this one. There we go. I've just changed it to 19. And we can also change the font. Pretty much all the normal stuff uh, editing wise for text. And then if we go to graphics color, you can uh, change the different graphics here. So the first group would be these ones here. Anyway, I've just messed with a few things here. Uh, in the graphics color and the title part here. So if we go to object settings, as you can see, you can change the scale, the height, and all that. And that's the new part in the title designer. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is your options now to keyframe the anchor point. Okay, so let's just go to uh, PIP designer. So now if I scroll down here in all the various options for keyframing, and we go to anchor point, you can see that we can add a keyframe here. So I'm going to go to object settings, and then scroll down, and there's a new anchor point tab. So we can uh, just checkbox display anchor point if you want to see it. Then you can just take the pin and put it wherever you want. So say I wanted the clip to rotate around this uh, catch up here. Now I've put the anchor point there, and I can keyframe it to wherever I want. But let's just say I wanted it there. Then when I go to uh, click on rotation, uh, skip ahead a few frames, and we can keyframe the rotation of the clip. As you see, as I rotate it, it's going to be rotating around the catch up there and not the center of the frame. You can add some motion blur to make this more exciting. As you can see, it rotated perfectly around the little ketchup thing there. So we could easily turn this into a transition. So I'm just going to click OK, get another clip. Let's get this landscape here. We're going to copy the keyframe attributes, paste them onto this clip, go into its PIP designer, head on down to the anchor point, make sure this uh, keyframe is selected, and I'm going to position it on the sun here. Now I can just change the opacity keyframes here and it should look like a transition. Well, close enough. I tried. Another thing you'll notice about the keyframes in the PIP designer is that uh, you can do this hold keyframe. So if I right click on this keyframe here and click hold, that's gonna look like this blocky thing. Uh, let's make a new keyframe position. We'll just keep this one as linear. But basically what hold means is that it'll hold the position until it gets to the next keyframe and switch instantly. Let me show you. So if I change the position of this keyframe here to like uh, down somewhat, it's not going to go and move downwards throughout this period of time. It's just going to hold at this keyframe and then jump as soon as it hits this one. It's holding, it's holding, there. So that's how the hold keyframes work. And I can change it back to linear if I want to. All right, so if I am in the video overlay or PIP objects room, and I go down to sketch animations. So as you can see, we have 14 ones that are pre-done here. If I wanna edit one, then I can just say, uh, let's drag it down here. But you can either right click on it click edit and sketch designer, double click on it, or click designer, just like any other designer. So this is the new sketch designer. Let's say we want to change the color, we can just pick a color here, and every color you pick shows up in your recent colors, right here. You can also change the width of the stroke, you can flip it, and you can also change the ending effects. As you can see, the little orange bar here, this is where the ending effect starts and it's just a reversal of the drawing. 
So now if we go here, you can go to the paint designer and create your own hand-drawn animation. So you have a few different options for uh, tools here. So you have a pen, crayon, and chalk, as well as an eraser. So this is my animation here, except as you can see, it's way too slow. So we're just going to go to playback duration, and I'll change it to one second. There we go. Pretty fast. You can also change the background transparency here if you uh, are distracted by it or choose to just get rid of the reference frame. Let's now say that we're finished with our drawing. We can just insert it at the current timeline position and click OK. Now you can create your own custom template if you want and we can use the slider here to get a thumbnail for the template. So it appears in my custom, <laughs> my terrible custom template here appears in the custom section and now it's on the correct position in the timeline. If we go back to all content or anywhere else here we can just uh, go ahead and create a shape. So obviously you can just like kind of mess around with these presets here and the shapes if you want to. You have all these settings like shape fill. You can change the shape outline. So here it's a circle and I want a dotted outline. If we go to shadow it's basically the same thing. Now if we want to add a title here. Now if you go to keyframe you can change the position, the scale, these are things that you can keyframe. Keep in mind though, if you're going to scale, the objects have an actual resolution. So as you scale, you can see the pixels. And as well, if you click OK to save, then you can enter a custom name for your template and choose the thumbnail position. So there have also been some changes to the audio mixing room. So if we go to there, as you can see, it looks a little bit different. I only have three tracks here, but uh, for the first one, you have your levels. If you go to change them, it's going to change uh, your audio level in the timeline where you are at currently. And if you go here, you can change the whole entire track's volume. So now we can bring another clip into the timeline. Let's bring this uh, landscape shot here. Let's go back to this clip and click Fix Enhance. And Color Match. So we have some new changes to the color match. Let's select a reference clip. Now let's match the color. Now you can change the level of the matchingness, as you will. You can change the hue, the saturation, as well as the brightness of the effect. And we can just hit apply. So color match has improved now in PowerDirector. Along with general improvements in PowerDirector 19, I feel like all the things I've talked about in this video are helping the software take another step towards the future. So thank you all for watching, don't forget to leave a like and perhaps subscribing if that interests you and I will see you all later, bye!